before I start, I'd like to share that lately I've been getting a good number of views in my channel. Thanks to all of you. However, the same isn't happening with the number of subscribers. If you're getting value from my videos, I'd love you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That would mean the world to me and to this channel towards creating more contents like this. That being said, let's dive right into the topic. For the build quality, both are primarily well constructed. Everything is basically of the same material and of the same composition. But the size and the weight differences are indeed noticeable. While both are seemingly portable, the 16mm is obviously bigger and heavier than the 30mm. Both are from Sigma, who is known for making lenses with excellent autofocus. So right off the bat, the two are reliable in this category. However, in most of the reviews and articles I encountered, the 16mm seems to be the winner. But having to experience both in actual, like I said in my previous video, the 16mm could be better but it is not that significant. For the image sharpness, the 30mm is without a doubt the better lens. But same with the autofocus, I could still let this pass. The image sharpness I get with the 16mm is certainly impressive as well. Both offer a whopping f1.4. Hence, both are monsters in low light situations. Does that sound good? Monsters in low light? Anyway, both are very capable in low light photography and even videography. In addition, both lenses never fail to give me that creamy bokeh effect or that blurry background. It's a plus though with the 16mm because it's a wider lens. Like it's super satisfying that I get to have a bigger, wider frame and still able to achieve that nice shallow depth of field. All thanks to that large aperture. Good job Sigma. Now for the final round. If there's one thing I want you to really take into consideration, it is this last category. Like if you haven't noticed, there may be differences between the two in the first four points, but honestly speaking, they are somehow negligible. That might sound odd or something, but that's just my honest opinion. And I want to mention that because my goal here is not to dwell on the minor differences and leave you more confused on which one to buy, but rather point out critical major difference that will make your decision making process a lot easier. However, if you want a more detailed discussion of each of them, I already made videos that you can check right after. Links down below. That being said, let's talk about the biggest difference of the two, the focal length. One is obviously wider than the other, that's just it. Although for APS-C cameras, 16mm is like 24mm and the 30mm is like 45mm full frame equivalent. For talking headshots, I use both. If I want a chill, laid back feel, I'd use the 16. But if I want a serious, formal look, I'd use the 30mm. But one practical reason why I would choose the 16 over the 30 is that I can be near the camera and still capture a lot of the background. With that, I also get to mount the microphone on the camera for a less complicated setup. With the 30mm, since I can't be that close to the camera, I usually need to set up this overhead microphone just to capture good audio recording. For handheld vlogging, the 16mm is my only choice. Simply because it captures a good amount of the background considering I have short arms. For cinematic videos, I personally prefer the 30 over the 16 due to that natural, realistic looking field of view. For portraits, same with cinematic, it's always recommended to choose the most realistic framing. Hence, the 30mm is the way to go. I bet the 56mm will definitely blow my mind. I really can't wait to have one. Sigma sponsor me. For street, landscape, and architectural photography, the wider, the better. Hence, the 16mm is definitely the winner on this one. Generally speaking, I think it boils down to preference. What I shared are my preferences. It's not like those are strict rules or something. Of course, you can use the 16 for portraits, the 30 for landscapes, etc. Like who cares? In fact, I don't think there is a better lens between the two. 
Yes, you heard that right. Because we're not comparing an apple to another apple. Before you stop the video and laugh out loud, hear me out. It's actually more like an apple went head to head with a banana. And it's just not right if you compare the two like they both give the same nutrients. Because they don't. When the doctor says that you need to eat more apples and yet you kept on eating more bananas, it might not cause you harm, but it's not the best for your health either. Chances are, you will end up still feeling incomplete and wanting for more. And we don't want that. So instead of asking which one is better, figure out first for what you do, for your style, which one do you need? An apple or a banana? Let me know in the comment section. There you go folks, I hope you enjoyed my medical analogy. I hope I made myself clear by doing so. Once again, if you're getting a thing or two from this video, please do like and subscribe to this channel for more not super technical, but rather medical, sorry, practical approach to gadgets and technologies. Until then, thank you for watching.